Hey everybody, how's it going? So, I'm back in Jersey, living it up lifeguard style, and I managed to rent the same room as I did last year. So, I hope everyone's having an awesome summer so far. I know I am. Eight hours a day out in the sun. Pretty good stuff. And while it is summer out here, something about this apartment really doesn't scream summer. It really just kind of looks like, you know, an ordinary apartment room. So today I'm gonna give it a bit of a summer touch. I'm going to add something on this corner of the room. That right there, that little corner there, it's kind of just an empty spot and I figured I could fill it up with one of my stencils. But we're not doing a regular stencil today. I thought we'd do something creative considering the atmosphere I'm in. So to really get that summer vibe going, I'm going to make myself a little hula girl based on my wallet from Space Dandy. It's a hula girl holding a laser beam gun, which screams both sci-fi and summer. The way I'm gonna do this is with some wood, so I don't expect you to really follow along with me. If you do, they sell this kind of stuff at Home Depot and things like that. But other than that, you guys have waited a long time for a video, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is some wood. As I mentioned, you can get that at Home Depot or any other place like that, a lumber yard, anywhere that sells wood, really. Luckily for me, the city I'm in uses wood fences to guard off the plantation. Every few years, the city replaces the fence with a new fence, but leaves the old pieces behind. I just kind of went along the beachfront and collected any pieces of wood I found on the ground. Most of the old fences have rotted away, leaving the wood behind. So I just combed the whole beachfront looking for pieces of wood on the ground. Collectively, it probably took me around two weeks to find enough pieces for the length of wood that I wanted. Paint and paintbrushes. I picked these up at Walmart and the dollar store, but you could go for the higher end stuff in the art stores. The colors I needed for this project were green, yellow, black, red, brown, white, and blue. And to achieve other colors or tints in the same color, I would combine two or three of them together. Super glue and a glue gun. Now I don't have my regular super glue that I buy at the dollar store near me, but I found this at a local dollar store as well. Pretty much any super glue will do. I used the glue gun as a backup, which actually came out handy for this project. Spray paint. I used a tan color, but I ended up using it all and threw it away. So this is just a visual representation. As always, I usually stick to the flats, as glossy and satin leave a bit of a shine. A saw, hammer, and some nails. Now the nails I got at a dollar store, they were actually like a buck 25, and there was a variety of different sizes and lengths. The hammer is actually part of a Swiss army knife I own, as well as the saw, which you'll see in the video in a few minutes. Didn't work out that great. If you can, just use a real saw. All right, that's everything. Let's get started. All right, once you have your wood, I needed around 18 pieces for this. Start placing them down on the ground. Put them in an order so they lay perfectly flat against each other. Once they're flat, use an additional piece of wood on the back. That'll stabilize all the pieces of wood together. Before I can do that though, I need to make sure it's the right size. So I measure it out and then cut it with a saw. Unfortunately, I don't really have a saw, so I just use the one on my Swiss Army knife. This was a really long process considering the size and all. I think for my next video, I'll just buy a saw. Plus, I have to do this for three pieces of wood in total. Honestly, I don't think I'll be doing that again. I'm definitely just gonna buy a saw. Once I do that, I place them on my pile of wood. Using glue I found, much like the glue I used back home, I'm going to spread it on the pile of wood, along with the supporting piece of wood I plan to glue on there. I use a combination of super glue and hot glue gun. Mainly because I didn't buy enough, and I really didn't want to make the trip back. When you do it, I highly suggest you just use super glue, or maybe something even stronger. I had to do this three times. Make sure you press down for at least 10 seconds. 
That way you know the glue takes. Once you do it, flip it over and make sure it's good. Now I go outside and spray paint a base coat just to make sure everything is evenly colored. The wood will absorb this layer of paint, which is good because I'm going to be adding additional colors to it. Once you're inside, you can start the real painting. I'm going for a yellow, just like what's on the Aloha Way. This is also a long process because I want to make sure I get everywhere evenly. But if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I do three layers. But in this case, I just did one layer to give it more of a worn out, rustic look. There you go, one yellow wooden plane. Now for this next part, I don't have a printer here given that unspecified disease is going on, everything's closed. So what I did is, I took the picture of the Aloha Oi that I found online, and then cut it up into four. The reason I did this is because I'm going to be directly tracing the pictures off of my computer. Once you have your pictures, it should look something like this. It's just the outline of the Hawaiian girl. We'll be adding details later. So for now, all we need is the outline. Once you finish that, go ahead and tape it down. We're gonna have it as one big stencil. Taping all four pieces down, make sure they're aligned with one another. Once you're done, start cutting out the silhouette. This is paper, so my X-Acto knife went through it pretty easy. Still, to make sure I got the precise lines, I did it slowly. Once you're done, pull it out gently, making sure that you don't tear anything. And there you go, a silhouette of the Aloha Boy Girl. I put it on to make sure I have a rough idea of what it's going to look like. I'm leaving space at the bottom because I am going to write Aloha Oi at the bottom. I'm not sure how it's going to come out, so I'm putting it high up just to make sure I have enough room. With all the pieces put into place, it looks like this. Take it outside and using a tan color spray paint, I go around the edges and I spray the entire silhouette on the inside. It was a pretty windy day that day, so I had to weigh it down with rocks. Also, make sure that you don't spill over the paint onto the driveway or wherever you're spray painting, because this stuff does tend to last. Now, once it's dried, you have the silhouette complete. Using reference from the picture of the Aloha Oi Girl, I go over with a pencil, penciling in all the details. Believe me when I say, this is a long process. But once you're done, it looks pretty good. And now I know everything is already mapped out for me. All the details are done, so I know exactly where to go. Now, once that's complete, pull out your black paint and start doing the outline. As you can imagine, like everything else in this project, it's a long process. I'm sure it'll be well worth the time. Since I have it penciled in, it's a lot easier for me to just trace over it. And you can see the painting coming to life right before your eyes. Once you're done,
done painting the outline, you can start to color it. I'm starting with red. So every part that's red, just go ahead and paint that in. That includes the flower, the bracelets, and the bikini. Now that we're done with red, move on to white. That includes the flower bud, the eyes, and the teeth. Next up is the green. The green is only for the bikini bottom, but I want to make sure I'm precise because I don't want to go over the black lines and have to do them over again. The best way to do it is to just go along the lines and then fill in the big empty areas later on. Once the lines are complete, it makes it a lot easier and leaves you enough room so that you don't make mistakes. Next up is the brown. I'm using a dark brown to contrast the tan color of her skin. This time I did the opposite. I did the entire area first and then did close to the lines. Next up is the gray, which is used for, you guessed it, the laser gun. I didn't have any gray paint, so I used my baby blue and white to create my own silver. Or gray in this instance. Last up, once it's dry, I do the remaining yellow. And well, my camera died, but I'm sure you get it. But I couldn't stop now, I was on a roll. So here's an artistic rendition of me doing the rest of it. Because it took so long for my battery charge, I just kept working on it. You really didn't miss that much when my camera died. I just filled out the rest of the yellow, gave different shades of green on the bikini to give it more of a sleeker look, as well as the shine in the hair and the glistening on the body, the arms, the torso, and the legs, and the shine on the laser gun. I combined yellow, brown, and white to make the shine that you see on her legs and upper arm, along using the other colors I used with a mix of white in order to get more of a shine look. So since I didn't record me tracing out the Aloha girl, here's me tracing out the Aloha sign. Same thing for the UA. I just kind of taped it on there and just traced it lightly, not to damage my screen. Once you're done, start cutting it out. The words were a lot more smooth, so I had to take better care of when I cut it. I also didn't have any plain white paper, so I just used whatever junk paper I had. Knowing that I would do this, I saved a lot of space on the bottom, but I'm still going to have to cover up her foot a bit. Alright, since I'm not going to do this with spray paint, I'm going to do it manually with my paintbrush. 
The best way to do this is just to go around the edges, painting it in so you have the lines when you take it off. I still use rocks though to lay it down. There you go, the Aloha portion is complete. Now for the Olay. Same thing, just paint over the paper. That way you get a nice line. The calligraphy is so unique, I didn't want to do it myself and just freeball it. That's why I cut out a stencil of it in the first place. Now for the holes in the letters. This was a bit trickier. So I just used a pen to hold it down while I painted around it. Once you've got your lines all painted in, you can start painting the interior of the letters. I'm not going to lie to you guys, this was a long and grueling task. So let's just cut to the chase. Now that it's out, I have one final part. And that's the white exterior to the letters. I had to be very careful with this not to overlap any of the other paint. So I used various brushes to get into those tight spots. Going around the lines was not easy. It took a lot of time and patience. Once you're done the exterior lines, go ahead and do the interior lines. There you go, one cheeky looking Aloha Oi sign. All in all, this one came out pretty great and I'm really proud of it. And now I have a new permanent addition to this summer apartment. This took a lot of time and a lot of effort, but was it worth it? Hell yeah. All right guys, so in reality, that actually took me a couple of days. I had to cut it up between work waking up early, doing it then, coming home and not sleeping, decided to work on this instead. But the final product looks pretty good if you ask me. It's actually pretty big too. I'm sitting down right now, but this thing is pretty tall. So all we have left to do now is hanging up on the wall. I got a couple nails and a hammer. Let's go do that. Now hammering it in is the easy part. All you have to do is just nail it in, right? Oh. And there it is, guys. One summer set piece. It wasn't easy, but it was definitely worth it. I think it looks pretty good in here. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for coming by. And I'll see you on the next one. Now hammering it in is the easy part. All you have to do is just nail it in, right? Ah. Oh.